Hi, I'm Beth Parkinson and welcome to an interview where I get to speak to the amazing Reverend Chris Lee. Hi Chris, I am so excited to speak to you today. Now, for me, I, I've, I know a little bit about you. Now some people may be looking and saying, hey, that's a familiar face, where have I seen him before? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where we will be seeing you right now, where you'd be familiar? So at the moment, I'm uh, doing a lot of social media stuff and I have been for a while. So people might see me on Instagram. Uh, you might see me um, on YouTube. I've done a lot on YouTube and I've had the occasional TV slot. And, um, and if not my face and maybe just my voice, I'm, I do some radio stuff and I'm a pause for thought contributor as well at the moment. So I get around a little bit. Um, but <laughs> maybe maybe different mediums. So, oh, knows? that's brilliant! I was de I'm definitely grown up on the pause for thought, so I love those spots. But I love as well that you're not just in one pocket. You're reaching loads and loads of people. Um, something that obviously we can talk about w what you're doing now as well. But how did you going back? How did you first get into the ministry? What's a little bit of your background in that way? Yeah. So I mean it. Uh, my mother's a Christian and I always remember her praying over us at night and that was always a really special and safe time when I look back but I didn't really come to faith I would say and know Jesus until I was probably about uh, 19, 20 um, and what happened really I was a kind of young guy in the world I did a business management degree I had a job a career path in business I had a house and a mortgage quite early on and I saw this line in front of me of like where my life was going and what, what it was going to become. And I just thought to myself, is this what I want? And I it was quite clear that I didn't want that. And so at that time of my life around, um, you know, late teens turning to 20, just finished um, university, I got a job and I was just like, what's next? And a friend of mine, uh, a good friend of mine went out to Africa and it was there that he kind of rang me and spoke to me. And, and he was like, Chris, mate, you'd love this. You should come out here. Um, and he was working on a small mission in the middle of bushland, Tanzania, in an area called Kiteto, which is about 90% Maasai. And, you know, I had all this stuff in front of me, this job, this career path, this house. And I was just like, Ooh. But yeah, I ejected it all. I, I left, I quit my job. I put my house on the market for rent and I went to Africa and it was really there that I just fell in love with Christ. I saw, you know, the, you know, the kingdom of God in, a, in real ways. And I, I initially went out just to teach English. And the way that the best way to teach English in Tanzania was in my school was to use the Bible because everyone had a Bible and one side was English, the other side was Swahili. And so it was really easy to like read and learn English through that medium. So my English classes became Bible studies mm -hmm. and um, I started to just read huge chunks of the Bible. And while I was there, I was also helping a bishop um, on these things called confirmation safaris where we would drive around um, the bushland for hours on end and, and camp in different villages and he would speak and preach and baptize and confirm yeah. hundreds of people over a long weekend and it was there that my eyes were open to this truth this power the light of light of God and I was just like wow this is this is amazing and this is what I've been searching for and so I decided to give my kind of life to this avenue of of you know of potentially being a priest and and so I looked into it while I was over there and I just yeah I fell in love with Jesus there and and then you know two three years later I was ordained in the diocese of Mount Kilimanjaro in, in Tanzania so I did a distance learning degree for in while I lived in the mission in in Africa and yeah so it was I was ordained at 24 um and one of the youngest in the Church of England at the time and um yeah so I kind of went from famine to feast it was a bit like, you know, I was out fishing one day and Jesus comes along and goes, hey, come follow me. And I was like, okay. And I just every, left everything and went. And that's what it felt like. And yeah, I haven't looked back. Wow. Gosh, I love that. And I love as well, from what you're saying, we've experienced a little bit of as well. Um, my husband and I, we've traveled, we've done church planting in different nations. 
And I love how you're saying that actually you went in mind to do something and actually God did something even bigger. Mm. And it was actually a lot of what happened was in you. It was like, we can go somewhere with a plan to help people, but actually God says, you know what, I'm going to work on your character. I'm going to work mm. on your relationship with me and I'm going to open your, your eyes to something that is bigger than you. Mm. And that's just amazing. I mean, getting ordained on Mount Kilimanjaro, we were in, um, southern kenya so we were like just over the border from where you would have been so right. it's a beautiful part of the world absolutely beautiful yeah. um and i love it and so then now you've taken this real and vibrant um life with jesus this this relationship that is obviously so clearly alive and relevant Mm. And you've brought it back to a life in the UK, but you're sharing it as well. And you're not, you're not keeping it to yourself. You're not, it's not just a Sunday thing. It is, it is every, every day. And something that people may have seen, and I know this is something that I've seen as well, is that you've done these British priest response to and the music videos over on the Jolly channel. And I've yeah. got to say that <laughs> I was nearly in tears watching one of these ones. Um, I mean, there are moments where I'm nearly in tears of laughter because it is hilarious <laughs> to yeah. watch. Yeah. But also, obviously, I don't know how you got into that, but that's something um, where, so if anyone hasn't watched it, you sit down and watch a music video with Josh and Ollie, who host the channel, mm -hmm. and you then kind of give a commentary on it, but from a Christian perspective. Mm -hmm. And um, and then what I've been so moved by is the fact that you come from such an obvious, clear place of compassion um, and wanting to understand and to bring hope and understanding to people rather than mm. a, a, what people would normally kind of see as um, a Christian yeah. perspective. So mm. tell me, like, how has that been for you doing that? Is that something that has um, that surprised you in the way it's been taken up or? Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, it was it started when, uh, you know, we moved here. I'm the vicar in, in West London in a church called St. Saviour's uh, Wendell Park. And we came here and it was a very small congregation. And we asked Ollie to come and live with us because Ollie and his wife, uh, Lizzie, Lizzie is my wife's sister, and they're a great couple, and we love them, and, and they love the Lord, and, and, you know, we said, come live with us and help us in this, in this adventure, and they agreed, they came with us, and at the same time, he was running this YouTube channel, and he said to me, hey, do you fancy coming on, and I was like, yeah, sure, and he was like, leave your collar on, do it in your collar, why not, and I was like, okay, and then um, the first thing, kind of, the, the way we started was just me eating chicken wings, and talking about Korean food and stuff like that. And it was really fun. And, and then it evolved and people started to, you know, talk about, you know, Rev Chris and this, this priest on there and people were interested in this young priest. And then I prayed in one of the episodes for students and that really moved people and it, it went quite viral, hit a, a couple of million views quite quickly. And then the guys decided to set up another channel called Jolly and do a specific British priest reacts series with me and yeah we watched um popular music videos like ariana grande and bts and Billie eilish and the idea was that i would react to them and as you said it was you know i tried to come up from a christian perspective but with non-judgment you know mm -hmm. jesus is quite clear you know do not judge and yet we as a church are often seen as really judgmental and you know a little bit like a headmaster with a cane and a rule book you know, this is what, yeah. and I was just like, no, I'm just going to try and bring compassion, grace and love and speak light into this, into these young people's lives. So that's my, my aim was to communicate love and grace. And yes, these videos just went crazy. And, you know, our first video went viral. It's on 9 million views. I think one of our biggest is over 15, 16 million views. Um, as one I've been on, which is like nearly 30 million views. That was, and I was, it was like unbelievable. So it's about 350, 400 million views on the videos that I've been in with Josh and Ollie across the two channels, Korean Englishman and Jolly. And yeah, it just set me up to this. And I, there was no plan. I was, you know, it didn't like have a massive strategy. It was just coming on and speaking the love of Christ and young people are, I think, hungry and thirsty for truth and authenticity. And, you know, I, I, I speak about grief. I speak about mental health. Mm. I speak about um, just, yeah, just things that I think affect young people. And it really hit a, hit a note. And yeah, and then, you know, people started following me and finding me on social media channels and my Instagram started to fill up. Um, and that led on to more ministry where I just suddenly was, I felt compelled, 
like, oh, wow, I've got this platform. I've got this opportunity. I need to, I need to be a little bit more like, okay, what am I going to do with it? Yeah. So, hmm. yeah, I think, so I've already been quoting you. So I watched some of the videos. And so last night I was talking to somebody and saying, um, quoted you with, because there was something that really captured me the way you, where it's been most moving. It's like you say, where you've been talking about real issues that affect people, um, but doing it from a place of compassion and something that you said was when we see that somebody is struggling with mental health, not just standing at a distance and saying, you need to be over here, hmm. but actually going to them and helping them come to that place and not expecting them to be able to do it themselves themselves mm. um and i think that the, you clearly exemplified that not just in the in the field of mental health but in the in the whole realm of kind of getting to know jesus and not going not expecting people to say oh no you need to know jesus and you need to know all of your bible in mm. one moment and everything like this it's like no actually this is a this is a journey i understand that you are on a journey you may have never heard of jesus but hey i'm going to introduce you to him mm. okay i'm going to make it possible for you to know a little bit more about him mm. um and like you say i think there was a real hunger for that honesty and, and people not shying away from saying what they actually think about things um, and yeah. but you do it as i say in such a you do it truth wrapped in love which is just mm -hmm. so good to see and so you've seen i've seen as well that you're doing these one minute sermons which i love i'm doing um a thing called minute of hope where i do a bible verse a moment of hope and um, but to see one minute preachers i'm like yes this is the way forward this is brilliant um but this is that's then led to you writing a whole book yeah so yeah. did you ever imagine that was going to happen that's out 26 out. november look at it oh and it's got gold on it it's bling all right gold leaf it's a beautiful thing <laughs> i need one of those in my life for sure um but yeah, so that's obviously led to the book. So we launched 26th of November. Yeah. Tell me, how was, was that uh, just writing down the preachers that you'd already done for Instagram? How did that come about? So yeah, so the 60 second sermons, um, that I, I call it 60 second sermons, and that just came up one day when I was thinking, oh, and I should give a message and a mini sermon. And I was like, how long do I have? And I was like, oh, I've only got 60 seconds. And I was like, oh, why don't I call it 60 second sermon? Um, and so I started doing that. And it was just like quick thoughts, things that were musing in my mind, um, um, things to encourage and breathe life and Jesus into people's lives. So that's where the 60 seconds came through. And then, yeah, I had all this Instagram following people following me and I, and I've got a lot of followers now and I got approached by different uh, book companies and, um, and it was quite an, an amazing time where I was getting these offers and I was like, this is, this is crazy. And I went, ended up going with Penguin, which is this big secular publishing yeah. house, Penguin Century. Um, and I was like, this is amazing. And I, I wanted to go with a secular publishing house, not a Christian one, because I wanted to reach more people outside of the kingdom and draw them into the kingdom. Yeah. So the book is based on around 60 second sermons. Um, so it, the book introduces like um, uh, a 60 second sermon on the title in a sense of that chapter. And then I go into more detail and talk about it. And I share stories from my time in Africa, my life growing up and um, being married and children. And, you know, so yeah, lots of different things. And I see it is, you know, it's kind of like a self-help book mm. in a digital age written by a priest. So it's kind of weirdly unique in its own way. And also I think, you know, the whole self-help genre, you know, the church has been around for 2000 years and we have a lot to say in what it means to live a full life. Yeah. And Jesus said, I've come that you would have life and life is full. And I'm like, why are we not invading this space and, you know, and, and teaching people the reality of, of what it means to live a full life and ha what it means to actually have help for your soul. And so, um, yeah, I wrote it and I want to kind of reclaim a little bit of that space for, for the kingdom and, 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 and in humbly, but confidently proclaim Jesus. So, Chris, I am about to go and pre-order my book. As we've said before, you can get signed copies from Waterstone, it's also available at Amazon, and obviously many other bookstores will be holding it. Now, something that's intrigued me is, we haven't said the name yet, because it's an interesting one. Introduce us the name of your book and what it means. Yeah, so it's called The OMG Effect. And, you know, some people might go, oh, it's a bit controversial, OMG Effect. And um, the reason that I kind of feel really proud of this title is, is because I feel called to exactly kind of reclaiming this name, OMG. 
you know, when I, I asked the Lord once in prayer, like what's going on with this social media thing. And I was reading the Bible and, you know, as you read the Bible, sometimes a scripture just like hits you and you're like, wow. And it was in act 17. I was reading about Paul going to Athens and in Athens, he speaks in front of, and I can never say this properly, the Areopagus, I think it is, Areopagus, however you want to say it. In Athens, he speaks in front of this building and it says just before he speaks to these people and he speaks to them about an unknown God, it says he went to the place where all the nations gathered, where they shared and talked about all the latest ideas, but they did nothing. And then he speaks to them about this unknown God. And I felt the Lord say, social media is this place where the nations gather where they share and they talk about all these latest ideas and i want you to go into that space and i want you to talk about me i will talk about god and the youth today constantly use omg hashtag omg omg this and i wanted to say okay you're talking about god let's talk about it so that's that's why i feel really proud of the title and you know that that sense of calling to speak in this platform about this God that people are talking about, even though they don't know him. So yeah, it's called the OMG effect. I'm already thinking of who I need to get this for for Christmas. So you just let me know. Read that contents page out to me, please. <laughs> yeah, so I've got 12 chapters, classic. Oh, chapter. so holy. <laughs> so, holy. Uh, so I'll just whiz through them. So um, chapter one, facing Goliaths. Chapter two, learning forgiveness. Chapter three, community, finding your calling, prayer, self-worth and identity, positivity, humble confidence, leadership, family and friends, love, death and grief. So touching on quite a few things. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I do see it as, you know, a book that, you know, Christians, I think, will enjoy and gain a lot from it. But I see it as a missional book, you know, yeah. give it to your family members, give it to friends who you want to draw into the kingdom. That's how I see it, because it, 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 it's one of the things that I'm I don't know that I've been able to do relatively well is attract de-churched, unchurched and, you know, agnostic people to yeah. towards Jesus, because. I know the God's grace and all, but that's where a lot of my following comes. So I'm really excited about being able to speak that the love of Jesus in a humble, but you know, yeah. drawing in way to people. That is so good. I love that there's a chapter of prayer in that, because even as we're talking about there being, um, being self-help, but actually mm. what do Christians use for self-help? They use the Bible, they go use those tools. And we're, I think, as you say, we can be so, mm. we can kind of be backwards and coming forwards. And the fact that we've got this massive, amazing help guide mm. that you're putting in a book that is going to go out to secular mm. audience, to people who don't know unchurched, de church people. Um, mm. But it's got prayer in there as well. It's not just a pull yourself up by your own bootlaces kind yeah. of thing. It's actually there's something beyond you that is that is going to help you in this. That you know there is a savior who wants a relationship with you. Yeah. Gosh, Chris, this has been. I we could chat for absolutely forever. I know we could, but I have loved this conversation. I'm aware that you are a busy man and you've got a million other interviews and things to do. But um, is there, are there any other kind of closing thoughts that you would like to share with the CBN audience or just, you know, maybe even you'd just like to finish in prayer for us? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I would say is, you know, we've been in a tough year this year yeah. um, and it's felt a little bit like an exile for us all. You know, we've a, almost like a forced fasting period, yeah. um, but it is, it is a period where we can, we can turn to christ we can find that sense of love and compassion from him we can we know it's a struggle we have to admit it's a struggle it's been hard for everyone but the resources that we have are amazing and the world needs them yeah. so you know we need to push into god push into prayer um receive that light and then show that to the world around us and um yeah i just want to encourage people you know we have such a resource and so the, my main thing that i say again and again is that your identity is in God and you are loved. Just come back to that again and again, that you are loved with an abundant love that is all consuming and powerful. So yeah, let me just pray for everyone. Yeah. Lord, I, I pray for anyone that is um, watching or listening can hear my voice. I pray your blessing over them. I pray that even now that they would be reminded of the awesome love that you have for them, that you know every, you know every part of them, every breath they take, every hair on their head, Lord, and that you are for them. And you've done all things for them. Bless them, Lord. May they know your love afresh right now. In Jesus' name. 
That is amazing. I'm, I'm so excited to read it, but I'm also really excited that I'm, I'm like, there's going to be a second book, isn't there? There's just going to be. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how We're it goes. We're going to back in a few months' time. Be like, right, Chris, how many more nations have you been seen and how many more millions of people have you reached? But like you say, with humble confidence, and we're so, so grateful that we got this chance to speak to you today, just before this book is released. So we would encourage you, I'm so excited to read it myself. Um, and it's, it just sounds like a great read, like you say, relevant, it is gonna be powerful, and it's gonna speak God into places where he needs to be spoken, where people are talking about other things, but not honing in on the truth. So Chris, thank you. Thank you for being a shining light in this generation. Thank you for taking time to speak to us today. And we will hopefully get you back on to speak to us very soon so thank you and god bless thank you bye. god bless you thank you bye